you guys any questions? Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. You mentioned that uh, the Dorothy, the wife of Mitose, was involved in the crime. Was he ever part of the investigation during the trial? trial? Yeah, well, well, the, the other people that were convicted, Dorothy was. She oh. spent a minimal amount of time. Okay. And one of the sons, he, he had two sons, and Alvin and Alan, and I want to keep saying it was Alan was at one time incarcerated for a small period of time. <laughs> Alvin, I'm not sure. Um, of course, then, you know, uh, Mitosi also, this is something you know, we've discovered over the last few years. He had nine children. So here's a, here's a thing where everybody says, oh, it goes to the bloodline, so and so forth. And, and the one son, Thomas, is, uh, Thomas, I was hoping, but he wasn't interested in learning. He was interested in just, you know, and he was raised by a Filipino family by the last name of Paros. But Mitosi's first oldest child, his name was Susamo, and he was born in Japan. Now, he's probably deceased now, okay? This is before Mitosi went back to Hawaii. He had two sons in Hawaii. Susamo and the other one, I can't come to the head, but it, it's in documentation, as some of you guys are saying. And then he had the two kids in Hawaii, and the wife's name was Mildred, so it wasn't Dorothy. Mm -hmm. uh, Mildred was the mother of Thomas and also the other son, who is actually older than Thomas, okay? Neither one of them received martial training from Mitose. One, which is Thomas, received martial training from a gentleman by the name of Joe Albuna, a very nice guy. Joe Albuna was one of, did any of you guys ever meet him? Yeah. He yeah. came to the gathering. Yeah. Albuna was a class act. He was also the teacher of uh, Nashmeyer. Yeah. And uh, Albuna was a teacher of Thomas. He learned Kaja Campbell, they learned Kaja. And uh, then, he had three more children in L.A. So James was busy. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, and, and Dorothy was his wife And Dorothy in was, LA. A, was his wife in L.A. Yeah. So she was the one that would be, she was the one that went out and told Perry Lee to go get the check back. But, but no. that's one of the things about conspiracy charges. They, they roll into separate charges mm -hmm. and different aspects of the criminal conspiracy. Mm -hmm. Uh, affect different people. So she wasn't incarcerated as part of the murder as much no. as the uh, extortion, extortion. Extortion stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah you, you, you mm -hmm. have to remember this. Uh, during that period of time, you know, like Matosi, when he left Hawaii, he moved to California, LA. Okay? And he would go back and forth. Just like Trias would go back and see Thomas Young almost yearly on his way to Okinawa in Japan, right? And you talked to Professor Young too. Now, mm -hmm. I want to, so do you understand that? Yes. Okay, now, Larry, you had a conversation uh, many, many months ago uh, with Professor Young. Yes. And I'd like you to share some of the information about Thomas Young. Okay. Well, but you met with him and, and the other thing is, how close did Thomas Young and I become? <coughs> oh. Yes. <coughs> Well, because you were committed to Kosho, he was dedicated to you. Um, it, it was 1989, we were in Chicago. Um, I really did not know Professor Young that well. I'd, I'd gone to Hawaii and met him once and we spoke briefly and uh, um, he was walking through the hotel and he called me over and he said, asked if I had a few minutes to talk. And I said, sure, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, 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 yes, I do. And uh, we went and sat down, and uh, it was about three hours. And I don't think I said more than 20 words. And I'm usually someone who talks too much. But um, he talked a little bit about his history, and he talked a little bit about Tose, and he talked about but the thing that occupied most of our discussion was that he was bothered because there were things that his teacher expected of him that he did not follow through on. Part of it was keeping Kosher alive. Mostly that was his interpretation of why Mitosi turned the school over to him. 
Whether that was the intent or not, difficult to say, but that's how he took it. The other was, uh, he had sought his teacher's permission to promote a fellow student, and Mitose Sensei discouraged him from doing that, but he persisted enough that eventually Mitose said, well, you can go ahead and do that, but you have to take responsibility for him. And that was William Chow. And uh, he regretted that he didn't follow through on that as well, because he believed that a lot of the, the infighting and the arguing and the confusion in the, the Kempo world in, on the mainland came from his inability to keep. All right, this is, uh, uh, I'm Bruce Jenick, and this is uh, the, the second day of, of doing some filming pertaining to the crime of Mitosi, uh, some of the things that, that uh, were going through my mind when I met him, and I'm sure it went through his mind, um, and also certain incidents that took place. Uh, I would think I was talking about this gentleman named Dan Murray, who was an attorney, and uh, he was part of, he was representing the, the Japanese Legal League, which was based out of L.A. at the time. And they sent him up, and we caused us to let go because of experience in, in, uh, in courts and all of this stuff. We let him take over the investigation pertaining to Mitose. Didn't really realize it, but I realize it now that uh, when Murray came in, he had gotten all of the documentation we had pertaining to, uh, which we have recovered, uh, pertaining to the crime. Uh, let me you, he was evaluating. I remember the first attorney I talked to, his name was Anthony Furr, uh, he called me. It was late in the evening. He said, you've got to get him out. He's not guilty. That's a big thing to be laid on you. And, and uh, Mitosi, when, when I discussed with him somewhat about the crime, of course, he said, uh, he blamed it on himself, and that partly is what convicted him. And the reason was because the gentleman who committed the crime was his student. Now, if you really look at this, uh, you kind of understand. It's kind of like a firearm laws today. You know, you, you get caught, uh, somebody gets caught uh, by using a firearm, and somebody gets killed, and the, the parents say they didn't lock the gun up. They take responsibility. Well, that's how Mentosi was. Um, so anyway, Murray, through the whole court thing, um, you know, he went through, we're busy trying to save Mitosi. Mitosi did not commit that crime. And the gentleman I heard this from was the gentleman that committed it. Because when I went back to, it was in Chicago, I was in a, uh, a dojo, one of my guys, I told him, I said, lock the doors, videotape. And we discussed a lot. But he told me, along that he also gave me his oath of nonviolence, which is in my book, uh, a copy of that. And that oath he wrote, to get a black belt, you had to write your own, basically, support certification. And I will say, it was never signed by James Matosi. It was signed by a person by the name of Reverend Higami. And Kamitsu Higami. I've got a memory, and it's right there. And it was an oath of nonviolence. And I believe if that document would have been used in a court trial, Matosi would have never been found guilty. I got it from the guy who committed the crime. Okay? And it was an oath of nonviolence. Now, it Dan Murray, who was the became the new defense attorney for Mitosi, uh, it was a setup. My belief is because of, uh, again. The day of the funeral, he showed up at the funeral. After that, he disappeared. Couldn't find his law office. Couldn't find any record of him. Contact State Bar. No, they knew nothing. It was set up. And you got to remember, I, I believe, this is just my belief, uh, and that there's a lot of very, a lot of people in uh, the Japanese community in Los Angeles and elsewhere that looked up to Mitosi, kind of as a, someone who was a spiritual guide or what have you, but also they feared him. Well, I think there's a lot of information that people knew, maybe about uh, a lot of wealthy Japanese, maybe in, that were put over here as what we would call sleepers. Now, this is my theory. Got to remember that. 
uh, that were uh, sent over here before, let's say, the Japanese invaded, they could have set things up for the Japanese. Later, we'll go back in life, a gentleman named Mike Young, about two or three years before he died, he called me up. He says, Hanshi, he says, uh, uh, I got some information on Mitose's father. Yeah, what's that? His name was Otokichi Mitose. He owned a Japanese radio station during the war. So I think Mitose was kind of playing both sides of the fence, and I think he had a lot of information on a lot of very, very wealthy Japanese that might not have been put here. They were sleepers. They blended into our society. That's my belief. Okay? I could be wrong. Anyway, Murray became a defense attorney after Mitose's demise. He disappeared. <coughs> Couldn't find him. Also, documentation disappeared. Couldn't find it. Luckily, a lot of that stuff we got access to. So it was a, it was a really wild time. Here I am learning from, uh, from Mitosi, trying to go back, trying to reconstruct things. And I was given directives. Now, some of the people that I took out to see Mitosi didn't follow up on that. If you learn something in the martial arts, you don't take it just verbatim on what your teacher tells you. You go beyond that. If you don't do that, you're lazy. It caused me to do these things. I sought out Robert Trias, or he sought me out. I learned an awful lot of, from Robert Trias pertaining to Kempo, Kempo-related arts, the importance of learning history. I got that from Trias. Matosi didn't <coughs> lecture me on history. Trias did. And I listened to Trias. Trias also told me how to preserve an art form. He was a mentor. He wasn't just a mentor to me. He was a mentor to martial artists all over the world. Trias was an individual that I wish to God every student in the martial arts could be like him. Because what he did, every year he would go to Okinawa and go to Japan and he would, he would study up to the day he died. I see so many martial artists today, they're just so happy sitting in a bubble. They won't get outside of their own bubble and they won't go do what their, their teachers might have done. And I say might have. Unfortunately, even a lot of them don't do it. You need to study. So it caused me to see Robert Trias. Caused me to spend, I spent a relationship with Thomas S.H. Young for a long time. Professor Young was kosho, totally. One little thing about Thomas Young. First time I saw him, I asked him, I says, Professor Young, you notice I use the title professor. It's because that was the titles they were giving to blend in. Everybody recognized you go to college, you have a professor, you have a teacher, you have a student. Back then, if they're Japanese, it wasn't accepted. We were at war. So anyway, I'll use a title, <coughs> Professor Young. I asked him, I said, what is Kempo to you? He says, Bruce, Kempo is getting up in the morning, smiling at people, telling my family I love them, and making sure I spent the whole day not offending another human being. And that was Thomas <coughs> Young. And I'm the one who gave the, uh, uh, the eulogy when he passed. And I said something that's very true. In his 80 years of life, he never had an enemy. Thomas Young never had an enemy. He was an incredible, incredible man. So anyway, go back to the, the, the trial. Matosi was not guilty of the murder itself. I think he was probably guilty of extortion from our laws. Matosi's mind he was guilty because of the fact that it was a student of his that committed the crime. That crime was not done and planned out by a skilled assassin. It was done by somebody that was caught in the action of trying to retrieve a check. And I heard this from, the, from that gentleman. The scene was, it was in Matosi's kitchen. Uh, Terry Lee, the gentleman committed the crime, was in the kitchen. Matosi's wife came out with a screwdriver and a rope, talking. He, she wanted him to retrieve a $100,000 check from the Namamatsus, the people that were, uh, that were killed. According to him, Matosi kept shaking his head, no, no. It was a wife that caused him to go over and break into the house. He thought no one was in the house. He was discovered, fight broke out, panic killing, and um, like I said, my opinion, it wasn't done by a trained assassin. 
although the Japanese community referred to him as Kokoji Ninja Su, which means black ninja. Well, if you look at the history of Kosho, since then we've also been to uh, to students of mine. I haven't been there. <coughs> I've been to uh, Mitoshi's temple. Now, when we use the term Mitoshi's temple, it doesn't mean he owned it. Uh, I, I'll bring up Catholicism. If you're a Catholic, you belong to a certain diocese, a certain church you would go to. Other people would too. The people that directed what was going on in that temple, it's called Kinkai Zandai in Kyoji. It's in Kyushu, Japan, exactly where Matoshi said it was. It housed two sects of Buddhism, Rinzai sect and Tendai Shu. They were warrior sects of Buddhism. Uh, at one time, and it's recorded there, there was a fight between 400 warrior monks and 5,000 samurai, which were being directed by a man by the name of Yukinaga Konishi. Two thugs in Japan at the time was Yukinaga Konishi and Kato Koremasa. Kato Koremasa was Buddhist. They believed in something that Konishi did, Sipaku. Konishi was the first Christian daimyo. They don't do that. So there was a friction. Konishi attacked all the Buddhist temples. The Tosis temple, of course, I, I have my own theory about that. They had a rough time getting up the stairs. There's 3,333 steps to the temple. They were defeated by 400 monks. Okay? Now, jump back to the crime. So when Matosi was schooled at that temple, it wasn't his temple, okay? It belonged to the sect of Buddhism that was there, but it's where that lineage took place and grasped. The empty hand arts, the temple was built in 604 AD. Kosho first found its name there in 1235 AD. 1235 was not the empty hand arts. That's where a lot of the ninjutsu arts and the other type of uh, martial skills took place. The empty hand arts were in the 1500s, late 1500s. And they were based on traditional Shaolin Chuan Fa, Shaolin Kung Fu. Now here's something else that I'd like everybody to understand about history and, and, uh, and uh, areas. The martial arts, okay, Japanese don't move in straight lines. That is a theory pertaining to certain karate systems, the way that the body is set up to work with gravity. You had William Chow in control. Uh, and that's not to say that, you know, Chow set out to do anything negative. It's just that his view of where he was in the arts led in a completely different path, and unfortunately it was still attached to the same name. And so that name grew in all kinds of confusion. And all the lineages that evolved from William Chow grew up with their history from him. And what I encountered since is that a lot of students, the only history they study is what their teacher tells them. One of the things I learned uh, studying with Hanshi was, uh, you know, question everything. So, of course, I question him all the time. He, he'll tell me something and I'll go research and if I find a question or I find something where I think, oh, no, that, uh, as long as you've known me, how many times have I said, I don't think that's right? And we argue about it. Yeah, quite a few. Yeah, and, and we do it freely because that's okay. That's what you're supposed to do. Uh, sometimes I'll find something, and sometimes I'll misunderstand something. But either way, we go through the process of trying to find the closest truth. And a lot of schools don't do that. They'll, they'll take, because first of all, in a lot of schools, history is not important to them. So they'll take what they absolutely have to have, and they'll pair it back what their teacher told them. But when you do that, that becomes law. That, that's the way it is. And yeah, you don't question it, you don't challenge it, particularly if it means that you're closer to the source of the information. When I started um, training, I was working, when I started in Kempo, I was in the Tracy system. And at that time, the, the Tracy system 
directed their lineage from Tracy to Parker to Chow, and they would kind of casually mention Mitose. But he, you know, one sentence maybe. And like Hanji, I had been told a couple of different times that, oh yeah, he passed away. And that just shuts down that conversation. You don't talk about it anymore. Um, over the years, I've seen that change because uh, William Chow passed away. So the history over the next few years gradually changed and his influence on the history diminished and Mitose's rose. Well, why did Mitose's rise? Because he was working to enhance Mitose's image and so that was a better thing to connect to. So I, I saw that become a more dominant thing. And then Mr. Parker passed away. And so it, for the Tracy system especially, Mr. Parker had gone off on kind of his own direction. And so we're really more connected to the original art. We're, we're more like Mitos. <laughs> But uh, you have a similar background in that regard. Do you remember anyone talking about Mitose when you were early in the arts? No, Mitose was a uh, historical footnote, basically. And um, an asterisk. Yeah. <coughs> and now everyone struggles to connect themselves to him mm -hmm. without changing anything they're doing, without changing anything about their own previous history other than just eliminating the steps in between. Uh, well, we were doing the original stuff all the time. This, this is the real art. This is what, mm -hmm. and so, yeah. you know, we, we have that um, going on still today. Okay. So true. Questions we got? So, yeah. did did the clarification? Did uh, Parker train under Matosi? No. Oh, okay. No. Ooh, can I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This, is, this, this, this brings to mind something that I, I keep dear to my heart. Uh, there was an article in Black Belt Magazine, an interview with Ed Parker some years ago, when he was still alive. And he mentioned that Mitose had vis visited his school several times. And he says, I never trained with him. But there were a couple of occasions when he came in and he went out on the floor and worked with some of my students. <laughs> And I watched from the office. And it was pretty ineffective and didn't look like it would really work. And, well, it, it was just him being able to reinforce what he'd been told. And so toward the end of the article, he's talking about, you know, having seen Mitose in his school and all. And then he brings up a bunch of questions about why did he move like this and why did he do that. And so. I read the article and I wrote a letter to Black Belt addressed to Mr. Parker. And I said, you know, I have, I have tremendous respect for Mr. Parker. He took the information he had, he created a whole system, he developed many schools and a lot of great teachers and introduction to, Koch, uh, introduction to Kempo probably would not have happened to me without his efforts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I have great respect for him. I, my only concern is he had Mitose in his school and waited till after he died before he started asking questions. <laughs> when he could have just gotten up, walked out of the office, and asked him directly. Good point. And looking back 20 years later, now he has questions. Uh, there's another thing I want to bring up on that. They, they talked about, and it's got to do with Parker's book, Infinite Insights, where one of the students made a comment, they asked how Matosi would defend against a punch. So, so what Matosi did, he dropped down, hit the guy in the foot with a knuckle, and jumped behind him. They all thought, that's a weird way to do it, defending against a punch. Hey, you know the little thing I talked about him pitching me? Well, if a guy can come down, get below you, hit you in the foot, and be behind you before you can throw a punch, he could go through you and melt you. Timing. That's what he was showing Nobody understood it because they want to see the way he's going to block a punch. Well, punches, punch doesn't take place until the rest of the body's already moved. 
Well, Matosi could read motion to where he went down and canceled it out before he even got uh, even started to take place. Well, because it looked awkward, nobody wanted to accept it. They went all that flash dance stuff. Well, and if you've ever landed on a foot where someone mm -hmm. killed the nerves in it mm -hmm. <laughs> as you're landing, mm -hmm. uh, you're done. You you yeah. you. If you don't go down, that's a lot of effort. You, you, you know, when Mitosi asked me to hit him that time, and let's say if I would have gone and hit him and he did a block and a counter and all of this, really cool. But that, you know, so I could say, oh, I exchanged strikes with James Mitosi. No, the dude pinched me. <laughs> I couldn't hit him. He pinched me. If Matosi had done a block and a, and a counter, call me stupid. You would have gone back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You'd have already gotten everything you needed from him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> but dude pinched me. I thought I was a tough guy. So what Parker did there, or what Matosi did there, was basically saying, you guys don't know how to move or when to move. Because you don't wait for the punch. You should be able to read the punch before it even takes place. Mm -hmm. Preparatory in nature. Mm -hmm. yes, preparatory arts. But see, here's the thing too. When students are learning stuff, they gotta look at the subtlety. Yeah. They gotta look at the subtlety. And that's what's so cool about it is the fact that if I do live to be a hundred years old, I'm gonna be a bad man with jam. You're not gonna see me move, you're not gonna wanna look at me. <laughs> I'm gonna be pretty ugly at a hundred years old. But, but that'll help. But my stuff will be on time. Mm -hmm. And it's because that's how we learn to do things when we get older. Pretty mm -hmm. on time now. Yeah. <laughs> huh? I said it's pretty on time now. No, oh, yeah. uh, no, no, not, not, <laughs> it's not good enough. Still getting it, better. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, get better. So, with, with, with your, when you're talking about that, now you, you got to remember this too. And I, I, this is also important. If it was not for Chow, there would have never been an end part. If it was, if, if it was not. Or child, there would not have been an Adriano Imperato. Okay? Uh, if it wasn't for Imperato, there wouldn't have been a lot of different people doing Contra Kimbo. Okay? Uh, if there was not Ed Parker, there wouldn't have been how many people even been looking towards the Kimbo. Now, the culprits that really caused the problem, one was James Matosi, another one was Thomas Young. Why? They thought it was nonsense. We'll walk away from this guy. He's acting stupid. So where did it get him? A whole bunch of gods. So that's one reason that I do what I do. I want to make sure that I keep teaching. When I hear somebody saying something stupid, yeah, I want to walk away. But I'm not concerned about them. I'm concerned about the people that they're going to produce as students. Yeah. That's your lifeblood. That's the people that are important. Your children. Remember, I say who you are as a person, your accumulation, your mistakes. That's exactly the, what that is. So, if you're going to allow a teacher who wants to be closed minded, who's full of mistakes, to throw those mistakes into some young person or somebody else coming up in the arts, you're now contributing. So, I will always try to help the arts. And it's not just cultural, it's all of them. They're all bound together with the same, as Matosi said, look for similarities, ignore the nitpickers. You know, uh, one thing too, uh, through my whole journey of, of, of studying, you know how, uh, what happened is the Asians would fight one another, Chinese, Japanese, Korean, Indonesian, Filipino, whatever, they're, they're going to argue with each other. Philippines has 6,000 islands, Indonesia 14,000 islands. There's not one style of Eskrima, there's not one style of Silat. There's hundreds. They all deserve the same exact respect. And the funny thing is, what's really funny, Japanese, Koreans, they like each other. Why? War at one time broke out, okay? If you trace the Buddhist temples in Japan, a lot of them were founded by Korean priests. People don't know that. And if you trace the gene pool, it goes to Korea. Doesn't mean that the Koreans have it, and that goes to, to China. So you always got to ask yourself who's on first. They look at the, uh, the, the Pinoy, the Filipino, and the Indonesian as non Asians. And they don't like the Korean. So what they do, they teach all those prejudices to 
Americans, we come over there and lead on the prejudice. Stupid. Doesn't make any sense. It is very dumb. And I think Mitosi understood that. And, uh, you know, whether it's your, you take it with a different language, but if you really look at the different martial arts, just like uh, I'll bring up Roy Goldberg. Love Roy Goldberg. Sam Chen. Love them. These guys are, are, are starting to, to blend in. They're starting to see the, the comparison with the different art forms. Well, and they're, they are great masters within their arts and still learning. Really good students. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> they get excited about learning anything yeah. new. Yeah, but our land. Yeah. yeah. Well, very proud of these guys. So the, the thing is, when you're teaching students, you can teach them the basics and stuff. I, I had to listen to a gentleman talking to me about Korean arts. I walked into a, a Taekwondo school a little bit ago. I got pretty upset because the guy's doing a fifth degree black belt test. Fourth degree, fifth degree. I look around the corner, he says, excuse me, Mr. John, I was there to talk to him about the gathering, which is an event I throw. And this guy is a seventh degree grandmaster in Taekwondo. And he, uh, there wasn't one, fifth, fourth, fifth degree black belt test. There wasn't one older than 12. <laughs> and I'm going, then I come back and the black belt's going, well, you know, this is the grandmaster. You know, what trouble I'm having is remembering some of my forms. Talking about Taekwondo forms. So, what forms are you doing? ITF, USTF, ATA, what? So, it's a form Dango. You ever heard of it? That's a second form in Taekwondo. Mm -hmm. I went out and did it for him. I can barely move. This guy's second form in Taekwondo. So, what's happening? Mm -hmm. He's diminished his art because he's trying to, he'd rather save it all, dumb it down, so that he can get kids to pay three or four or five hundred dollars for a testing fee to get another rank. It's going to kill the art. Mm. You know? Now, Taekwondo... Well, and those kids will never study again. Once no, they're they, not going to study. Once they hit puberty, they're done. And they're done. they won't come back because they've already learned it all. Well, they've been told they know there's nothing. Yeah. So what does that do? It kills the art. Now, here's the other thing, too. Here's the other thing, too. You use the term Kempo. Japanese term. Chinese term for it is Chuan Fa. Korean term is what? Hun Ba. Indonesian term is what? Kuntao. It's the same thing. Fist law. Right, left. Right, physical, left, spiritual, morality. They all got the same bonding. Why the heck can't they do that? Because they want to take on the prejudice of an Asian culture that they know nothing about. The real difference between those cultures, Koreans like kimchi. Japanese like sushi, I don't know. Chinese? They like Chinese, whether it's sweet and sour, or Cantonese, or whatever's on the plate, right? Chow mein. You know what? There's still people. There's still people, and they're all tied by the same bonds. Then you have to listen to all the other systems, okay? Well, what form do you do of this? I do this form. Oh, shut up. Look at the basic common threads. That's what Matosi writes about. Similarities. Mm. I'm lectured today about the Filipino arts. I get people coming up to me, I'll travel someplace. Oh, you ever heard of Filipino stick fighting? John, you remember when I went back there to, mm -hmm. you, what did you guys do? You guys were wanting to know where you got your Filipino stuff, right? right? And what happened? By the time I hit number six on the 12 strike pattern, you said you could stop there. You said that comes from me. <laughs> and what happened? Your teacher? Yeah, you know, was, and then we, then we found out uh, a few years after that that it was, you know, he attended seminars with you in, in the mid-80s, and you were coming to Denver that day. Mm -hmm. We didn't know that. So we joke amongst ourselves that, that we've been in the Hancha Jutnik lineage for, you know, since 1980. <laughs> <laughs> so. But, but it, it, this this is the thing you got to remember this that the the wheel was born was created before you mm -hmm. and it was round. And that's the one thing too that I always explain to people that there is no such thing. Uh, what's the straight? What's the closest thing between two points? It's not a straight line. It's a circle. Mm -hmm. A straight line is part of a circle. And um, if, if you get get through that to people. 
and they can understand that, guess what? They'll grow great in the martial arts. But what it is, it is the parents that screw them up. Now, when I'm saying parents, I'm not talking about their blood parents. I'm talking about their experiences that create prejudice. If you really stop and think about it, man, yeah, you're, you know how we all get muscular problems and physical problems uh, as time goes on? Well, you talk to martial artists today that doesn't have hip, knee, back problems. Huh. You didn't do anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're working hard now. Uh, it, you, you, you know, it's all going to happen. But, but the funny dog I think about is that uh, if you can explain to people and, and oh, okay, let, let's say if all I do, for instance, when I'm doing Philippine arts, I see a guy making too big a movement with a stick. I've never figured what Remy did to me. Put me in a corner. Made me fight in a corner. And you had to bring your stuff in. And then one time I, I was working out, we had a Westinghouse refrigerator box. <laughs> and had me and another guy spar with the sticks inside the box, and he took a stick over the box. So every head came up, he got hit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like the six foot Joe over here. Yeah, yeah. 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 You yeah. drop your head up yeah. in the car, you got hit. And, and uh, <laughs> so, did that. now, that's where that's like knee problems and hip problems. If you work out your martial arts and say you're, you're confined to a, a 12 by 12 area, you'll develop different joint problems over a period of time than someone working out in a big room. Mm -hmm. That's the effect of gravity mm -hmm. and, and the four wall. Yeah. That's right. People don't think that way. So when I talk about prejudice and I talk about uh, the parent, parent comes in with their own prejudice. They have their own opinions, political views, religious views, or whatever. That, and that it's healthy. Matosi said this too in his writings. There's much knowledge to be found inside closed systems. But if you work just within this closed system, you might be overlooking the most important part of logic. You forget how to look at yourself. And that's true. And every student you have is their own book of information. And for you to really understand what they're doing, you've got to kind of understand the rest. Now the student has to learn to look at it and say, you know what, I feel this way because my dad taught me this. My mom taught me that. Oh, you're going to hell if you say this. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I got to watch what I say, but I won't. The politically correct stuff today is ridiculous. I came up in the 60s, man. We called each other every name of the book. It's your intent. It has nothing to do with a word. Mm -hmm. It has to do with the way you say it. Matosi writes about that, too. Words are difficult means of communication. Mm -hmm even when the same background and language are common factors. Now, that's true. Words, what Larry's talking about when it comes to teaching, he has to use words to explain to the student what he wants them to do. But the student has to interpret those words. Yeah. And that's based upon their prejudices. Mm -hmm. So when they start screwing that up, it's because this guy's interpreting it from what he's saying. My, uh, that's when I smack them the stage. Mm -hmm. that's <laughs> my use of terminology, nope. my, much of the stuff I do in Kosho is, is my terms. Mm -hmm. And some of it's so wild. Um, who's the guy I always gave credit? Oh, uh, comedian. I always say, that's the guy. Norm Crosby. <laughs> uh, yeah. He used to take the English language and butcher it so bad that you made sense out of it. So sometimes when I'm using conceptual uh, theory and principles of teaching, I know you guys are struggling because I know you're going to find your own answer. But because of the fact you're so confused, you got to find some answer, right? Mm -hmm. And then I got to think, well, how they come to that logic? Oh, well, that's because he's this way. Not being critical of that person, but that's what they do. Each one of us has to work through our own stuff. I was. Uh commenting to a class the other day that when I traveled and I'd show up at a, at a school that I hadn't been to and they're asking me questions, they'd ask me questions using terminology that I don't use, but it came from you. <laughs> and I have to try and figure out not only what their question is, but what you meant 
by using that term, and so I, I would do, I, I, and I'd do a disclaimer. I'd say, this is what I think you're talking about, and we go ahead and do it. <laughs> but I said, honestly, you know, I, I, I've worked with Hanshi for a long time, but it's always been, you know, we do a weekend, and then I don't see him for a month or two months or three months. And so some of the terminology he uses, you know, I'm fascinated by it, but I don't use it. And so I have to try and figure out the concept. What, what's the concept that you're working on? And so, I, but half the time, they 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 want to have that term figured out. Right. And I say, well, the term's not the important part. Show me what it is you're doing, and I'll I'll work on it. Yeah, you, you know, and, and uh, there's a there's another thing I always say. Technique is born from un uh, from what. Unconscious thought, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it is. That's where it comes from. If you can just do something, you just do a principle. Technique is born from that, yeah. and your, your techniques will start coming out. But then, once you label the technique, you just killed the concept, yeah. and then now it's dead. <laughs> you just killed it. <laughs> you got to move on. Yeah, let go and keep going. Kill the just Buddha a tool, man. man. Yeah. Okay. Just a tool. Any questions on the, the incarceration? Any questions on this? Any questions to these guys? These guys are all. Uh, I'll just bring up Kurt. I first met him. He was student hilarious. He was a tournament guy. Sure. Tournament guy. He liked tournaments, liked fighting, loved kicking. And um, well, he's good at it. Yeah, he was very good at it. <laughs> he was I must protect my honor, I must fight, I must do this. And the coastal guys are here and all these Wing Chun students are there. And he says, uh, he's gonna defend his honor. All he's talking about is his honor. And he's gonna fight. He's gonna show that the Gracies were no good. And I'm eating, going and I says, you know, but he said, first of all, he says, what would you do if they challenge your Hanchi, the Gracies? I'd have to accept it, but it'd be under my terms. What terms? I said, a spelling bee. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he went, huh? I says, why do you want to do that? Oh, I must defend your honor? That's ego. Yeah. Your honor? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I said, you're a Wing Chun man. Wing Chun's great. All these students, you're going to go do that for your honor? And, and at that time he was engaged. I don't know if you ever married or not. He was engaged to Jacqueline Bassett. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very well known actress. Remember her? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I said, aren't you married to Jacqueline Bassett? I mean, married, engaged? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I tell you what, while you're doing that fight, I'll eat popcorn, I'll babysit. <laughs> That's ego. It's, it's bad ego. It's sick ego. Okay? In the meantime, I'm looking at these Wing Chun guys, and of course, Dave Champ was over in the corner laughing his butt off. Because oh, yeah. he heard what I was doing. But that is someone, or people, and there's people like that all the time. They're so protective of their ego that they're going to fight this guy, they're going to fight that guy, they're going to pound their chest. Why? Let's go learn something. Wing Chun. They argue. Modified, traditional. What form of Wing Chun are you doing? It's all good. It's all okay. You're from Leong Ting. You're from uh, William Chun. Who are you from? It doesn't matter. I do modified. I do traditional. So, if you're doing the arts with the right heart, it's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. But if you start getting on that ego stuff, man, it's silly. And I see that all the time. Uh, I'm not going to bring up the names, but I will say this. I just saw what happened to Seelot. This is what Mintosi is talking about being evil. <coughs> that statement was evil. The guy in uh, in Chicago. It was bad. You don't do that. Two guys fought in Sea Lot just recently. It was on YouTube. They're challenging yeah. each other. One came from one lineage of Sea Lot and the other one. They didn't even do Sea Lot. I saw a little bit of sloppy arnese. I looked at it. Sick. One of them died. In the name of Sea Lot? Give me a break. It's ridiculous. That's evil. Silat is in beautiful art forms. Mm -hmm. And the cultures can be beautiful. The most Silat systems come from something called the Kambangan, mm -hmm. the Blossom Dance. I was just thinking that. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's how it works. But you get an individual <coughs> and they start arguing amongst themselves. And then you bring it here and you get some guy that thinks he's doing this, some guy thinks he's doing then they're going to fight each other. One guy dies? That's where Matosi was talking about it being evil. It's stupid. You don't do that. 
you can have such a great, you don't need to fight anybody because we're fighting ourselves all the time. You gotta deal with your own ignorance, man. And you, and it, That's one thing people don't realize when they say they do self-defense, they're doing it against attackers. No, man, you have to do it yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Self-defense no, is, self is, is brushing your teeth and looking both ways before you cross the street. <laughs> yeah. Come on. should be the self part of it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Self-defense. And it's also taught me that uh, mm. to say this, and I say this all the time, I can't be beaten. You know why? I don't care. <laughs> can't be beaten. Being beaten is a, it's an egotistical statement. Yeah, mm -hmm. Somebody can knock me down, knock me out. I wake up, I'm okay. If I'm not, well, it's just hoping you can dig a hole big enough. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. or bury me, maybe. Mm -hmm. Or just burn it. So, anyway. Now, Trenton and Greg were around me through, uh, uh, through a lot of the beginnings. And just yeah. like a lot of the notes you guys have taken were done from, from Sherry. Oh, yeah. That I've been teaching, which is notes that were taken from that was from '89 on, and this is the whole learning process from the Tulsi. And these guys are around it all. They've seen so much. They really have. Um, they uh, uh, there's another thing about students. They've been students of mine since. I argue with you guys. I think it's '75. You guys think it's no, what? It's '77. '77. He was '77. I was '78. He's the one who introduced me to you. Yeah. Why'd you do that? I was my bored and I needed something. <laughs> <laughs> so these these guys saw What's the, this. Uh, yeah. Now here, here's the thing. Okay, we'll say it's 1977. I don't want to say it's '75, but oh, yeah. here, these guys are still studying. Okay. And every day still they, still, they still come out. They're still, you know. Now that should put you. You shouldn't be on 10th degree or 15th degree. You should be white belt. No, that many years? <laughs> it should be at least a 25th degree black belt. No, I want my testing piece. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Super supreme. Yeah. yeah. With onions. <laughs> With onions. <laughs> With onions. <laughs> 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 Platinum belt. There you go, platinum. Oh, yeah. yeah. With Velcro. Oh, oh good. Oh, perfect. So uh, that's you don't have to do that. You, you guys, the whole reason we're bringing this up because if anybody's watching this stuff that does martial arts and you, you're uh, just do me a favor, uh, the students of the arts, please pay attention to it. Respect your teachers no matter what they're teaching you, but uh, respect yourself more by, by going beyond what they're teaching you. And if you don't do that, you have no respect for yourself. Mm. Have respect for yourself and do that because it's important. Uh, the arts are precious, they're very precious. Yes. Martial arts were founded, uh, they want to say the Buddha Dharma? No, founded with birth of mankind. The whole process of living is struggle as the law of growth. And that is you're dealing with martial arts all the time. Doesn't mean that you're stabbing somebody or hitting them with a stick. No, no. So anyway, um, Trent and Greg, I, they've been students of mine for a long, long time. I've got other students that, you know, they'll They'll be gone for a bit, but they usually always come back. But these guys have always learned. Mm -hmm. And they've never been bored. And they're still studying. And they're probably mm -hmm. two yeah. of the top kosheru practitioners that you'd ever see. Yeah. Um, I, I always tell people, I say, hey, look, you know, you guys can say what you want. <laughs> Just go ahead and hit them. Now, the funny thing about these guys, especially this guy, uh, you go to hit him, he's going to take you down. And he's going to help you out. He's going to say, laugh and he'll be yeah. laughing to the <laughs> whole day. And he's going to say, how you doing, buddy? You okay? And they'll take the shirt off their back. And then taking the shirt off their back to help you means that they're open. That's why they're going to learn. But the second they get smug in their belt or rank or whatever, the old me's going to come back at them. Okay? So, you got anything that you want to say? It's just, uh, you always talk about the arts have been a journey, and it, it sure has, you know. You, when you have someone like yourself, you know, I, I can't say enough that we're so fortunate. Yeah. We yeah. really, really are. Shut up, shut up. It's, okay, shut up. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> okay, great. But you're right. Well, you're good. I haven't always been here. I've, I've had a couple of leave of absences for a few years here and there because uh, you know life gets in the way and whatnot. Here. And I will say that if you're not staying up on top of it, mm -hmm. Kosha's constantly moving forward. 
and you know you, I leave for a couple of years and I think I pretty well know what's going on and I come back and I see what they're doing and they're doing things in a whole new frame of light that I never considered before and I've had that happen to me a couple of times so it just tells me that kosher is always evolving this guy never stops learning ever I think he learns in his sleep so and, you know, it challenges us students to work even harder to be better students, right? And and to what Trenton was saying, it's been a grand journey, and we haven't had, you know, we would not have met the the people that we have met thousands. throughout the journey. Oh yeah, right. Boy, that's true. Over the years, it's just it's been an awesome process, and we met some really great martial artists, really great individuals and human beings, and it's been a blast. Mm -hmm. uh, one other thing too, and this is partially. I, I'm not going to call it plug, but the, the gathering, something I started. The gathering has got a wall of legends, which is a hall of fame, I guess we can call it that. Yeah. The difference in my hall of fame and a lot of the other ones, be in my hall of fame, you've got to be deceased. And it's, it is a place where I try to cram down everybody's throat, history. Not a culture, but you name the system, you name the style. And up on that wall of legend, there's probably what over two hundred. There's probably over two hundred people. Yeah, up there by now. And um, if you do not take your time to study martial history, you're screwing up. And I used to come out and I used to tell all my students, look these guys up, find out who they were, then debate. And there's controversy behind everybody, man. They weren't saints, you know. Um, and uh, so the history is so important. It is so important. That's your soul. And um, they can be yeah. saints now. Huh? They can be saints now. Yeah. 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 But you, you think of the teachers you guys have met? Oh, Ming, yeah. Mike, My Bing God. Fai. Uh, what are the teachers? Will. Will. Ogasaki, Nick Serial. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, Amy. Amy Ogasaki. Michael Pasquale. Michael yeah. Pasquale yeah. Senior. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So many of them. Palamo. That's Palamo, yeah. Now, now, the thing is, I try to get through everybody, too. I got my gathering. I try to get my guys to go sit with these guys and talk. No. To Those, know. well, not them. They're deceased. But, I mean, when they were around. <laughs> Others like but, but you talk to these guys. And I encourage that. I don't want them, you know. And if they, they might end up, like, at the gathering. They might end up in a hotel room someplace learning stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. And they might get told stuff. Bad about me? Which is okay. I want them learning. And the more you, uh, the more you involve yourself in learning and process, the better. If you don't do that, you're gone. If I didn't take the time to go see James Matosi with all the stuff I was going through, mm -hmm. this stuff would have never been taught. Been if time. I didn't go on the journeys to see Thomas Young, to see Robert Trias, to go to Nebraska to see Dirk Mosey, these are places that were unknown to me. I had to go. I could have been told something totally different. But you know what I was going to do? I was going to accept it. You're seniors. You pay attention to your elders. You shut up and pay attention to them. And when you're listening, this is for all of the youth in the martial arts, when you listen to an elder, okay, and um, you want to, in your mind, when you first go into martial arts school, in your mind, your teacher has only been in the arts as long as you have. If you just stepped in there two weeks ago, as far as in your mind, they've only been at it for two weeks. You're wrong. If you see an elder, shut up and listen. You can learn an awful lot just having dinner. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, sometimes you don't pick it up. I learned so much from Matosi. And my other teacher, Remy Priestess, I learned <coughs> stuff about Philippine arts nobody knows. When Remy, now oh, I'm just going to share this real quick. Remy, and Mitosi. This is something I figured out probably about four years ago. Because I'm the one that started Ramey traveling all over the country. And I get on a plane and we travel together. Ramey, um, I met him through Rick Alamany. And my, my uh, motivation on meeting Ramey was to beat him up. Because I was a Sarata guy and a screamer. That was back in 73, I started with Kabbalists. And uh, so, they didn't like Priestess because he was around during the Marcos regime. So uh, Rick Alamany called me as Bruce because he knew I'd been in Filipino arts. When I was studying Filipino Escrima, there was only about 20, 30 people doing it in this country. So according to Angel, I was the first Caucasian to do Filipino arts. So Remy, Rick was going to bring him down. Remy wanted to meet me. I said, sure. I was frothing at the mouth. I was 
just about beat him up. Shows up, Rick's there, and uh, uh, Priestess goes, so you know Filipino eyes? Yeah, I'm pretty good. He said, you show me what you do. I showed him everything I did. And then I did this, I said, do you want to play? You know what that means? Do you want to fight? Mm -hmm. Well, I became his student. <laughs> <laughs> he whipped up on me, and Mr. Allen, when he was watching, he was laughing. And I became a student. We started traveling together. Now, that was in 1976. So I meet Mitosi. Ramey and I were close. Mitosi, I'll never forget, and I'll, I'll try to mimic him. He says, why do you want to learn Filipino stick fighting? Japanese much better. Ramey hmm? said, Bruce, you know that the, uh, in 1521, Fernand Magellan was defeated by Lapu Lapu in the Philippines. And that, 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 so I didn't realize this till about five years ago that Raimi was trying to teach me how to beat Matosi's art. Matosi was trying to teach me how to beat Raimi. I had no clue. They were both playing me. Yeah. And guess what? I benefited. I was learning it. Some of the stuff that I teach today through both the Philippine arts or uh, Matosi's teachings were kind of hybrid. Partially, I think, because they were dueling through me. What an experience. Now, I didn't realize that and, until one time, because Raimi did not really work with a lot of guys in the Philippine arts the way he worked with me. He did. Him and I were very, very close. And there's a lot of people that uh, know that, you know, how close Raimi and I were. And Mitose. So I, I had great experiences. Now, I'm, I'm, the reason I'm bringing this up, for me to get any of that, from him, from my other teachers. Everybody from Kuo Lin Ying to George Walms to uh, Brendan Lai uh, to Angel Cabalas. They were all great experiences. Guess what I had to do? I had to get up in the morning, I had to go someplace. I had to get in a class, I had to sweat, I had to learn. I didn't just get to look it up on a YouTube. I didn't get just to have it handed to me with a certificate. I had to go learn. And the reason I got the things I've gotten to certification with them is because I never asked for them. So they were presented for proper reasons, I think. And um, so what I'm saying is that uh, please learn, work to learn more, and do everything you can to learn everything you possibly can. And not doing so, and if you don't know your history, that is sinful. You need to know it. So I'm going to shut up. Are we good? Okay.